What role do you believe that xenestrogens such as BPA, phthalates, and analogs are playing in the rate of transsexualism, given their established high occurrence in human bodies and known effects on the INAH3, the human SDN? I don't recognize those last two um, abbreviations, but the, the larger question is basically we've got um, estrogens entering the water supply, entering the environment at rates that are far higher than they ever have before from things like phytoestrogens, which is to say that estrogens and their analogs exist in nature, um, but we have been synthesizing them and then releasing them through our trash and our urine uh, into water supply that then effectively feminizes boys. Uh, and uh, absolutely that's happening. Yes. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, how explanatory is it? How many, how many hypotheses are there, each of which have some role to explain in the actual <clears throat> legitimately increasing rates of transsexualism? I don't know. Um, but it is certainly one factor. Yeah, it's certainly one factor. Um, there's also clearly a cultural contagion factor, which dovetails with a general, um, general disruption of normal environments so sure i mean but that's i mean i think there are there are many many things going on with regard to the rise in trans and this person specifically writes transsexualism and i think that's intentional right like transsexualism and transgender you know you know as i as i ask in my recent letter to to abigail schreier in our letter wiki about specifically the contagion aspect of the rise in 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 teenage girls declaring themselves transgender at what point did we stop calling him calling it transsexual and started calling it transgender this is a muddling of the issue at best and frankly um transgender you know acting um in ways that is are historically more like the other sex would act um should warrant certainly nothing hormonally or surgically and probably nothing at all um you know at least within some confines whereas you know trans transsexualism like actually legitimately feeling like one of the many manifestations of your sex um, is out of whack with the sex um, that you that you are. You know, usually it's your it's your brain telling you for sure that the sex that your chromosomes and your gametes and your anatomy and your physiology um, say you are is not the thing that you say you are. You know, is are are xenoestrogens contributing to basically a broader array of intersex conditions? Effectively, yeah. I think I think they are, but you know, but there's also so, social contagion, which may have nothing at all to do with that. Uh, yeah. But it's it's really a different evolution of of transness. But what I wanted to get at was the interaction between these things. I think that there's some gateway which looks like I feel like something's off, right? I feel yep. like something is off, and I want it not to be off anymore. And so I'm looking for the thing that's off so I can yep. fix it, right? Yep. And the point is, okay, one of the things that's liable to be off is that you are getting a lot of uh, um, estrogens that you're not supposed to be exposed to if you're uh, a boy, or you're not supposed to be exposed to them if you're anybody, but if you're a boy, it has a particular effect, which is making you feel even more off. And yeah. then somebody says, you know what? A lot of people who are feeling off are really just fine. They're just facing a kind of oppression where civilization is telling them that they are something. It's denying who they really are. And it sounds like, you know what? Maybe that's it. Maybe I really am something else and I would feel fine if I was that thing, but I'm being told I'm this other thing and that's why everything seems so wrong and so people embrace it. Mm -hmm. And then the point is, well, that didn't work because everything is still crazy, right? Well, You're still interfacing with a world that is not well suited to you. And, and so- And no wonder that this is largely happening at the point that these kids are teenagers when guess what you're doing as a teenager is you're trying to figure out who you are and why you no longer are the kid you once were and are not yet the adult that you might become or are hoping to become or haven't yet even imagined what it might look like to become. That that age, that era in your life is exactly about, it doesn't quite feel right. This isn't fitting. I'm trying to figure out what it is that I'm going to be doing. And so to have a political ideology move in and say, we've got the solution for you, it involves going under the knife and taking hormones that are going to change your life forever. Well, that's, that's child abuse. Yeah, it, it is. is. I mean, at the same moment that you frankly have, um, Cardi B telling you what, uh, you know, 
the cool sexuality is, which mm -hmm. is insane. And then you have Joe Biden sitting down with Cardi B for an interview because the Democratic Party is, of yeah, course, on board. You can't make this stuff up. Nope. The point is everything is broadcasting some message that you can't possibly process normally because it's not a normal message. It's a malevolent message. And anyway, I think what you're finding is a lot of people looking for the same thing that makes them susceptible to get rich quick schemes and uh, snake oil, right? The, I, the sense that there's got to be some way. There's just got to be some way. Tell me what switch I can flip. And now, mm -hmm. hey, guess what? We've got the ultimate switch. If you find something off-putting about the sexual message you're being expected to interface with, then there's a reason for that. And it's called trans and here's what you got to do. And so anyway, yeah. the point is... The BPA and the other estrogens that you may be taking in feed into the sense that something isn't right, and then this other thing doesn't have to be connected to it directly. It just has to be connected to the fact that people for whom things don't feel right are looking for an answer, and this answer happens to be fashionable at the moment, which isn't to say that there aren't real transgender people, which there are, and there always mm -hmm. have been. But the point is the level of it, the degree to which this has risen as an issue can just be... Um, a matter of lots of things that create a sense of being ill at ease and a small number of solutions that are becoming fashionable. And there you have it.